it was, if you want to call it, a precursor to what's happening now. You're seeing the markets crash all around the world. The realization that the world is Greece is finally hitting all the markets. So, yeah, we're seeing the markets completely crumble. I mean, I'm looking at it today, and right. it's like down 300 points again. Right. I mean, well, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. We broke... Uh, we broke the, the, the bottom of, call it, on the Dow, 17,200, 17,300, and we broke uh, 17,000 last night. We're down another 300 today. Who knows how today is going to end? But if it's a poor end today, Monday could be an absolute outright disaster because you'll see some forced selling. People, I guess, are getting nervous now, and... Um... Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the retail investor is probably like, okay, I better get out right now um, before this whole thing starts to come down. Um, it's not just nervousness. Mm -hmm. There's, as I mentioned, there's, there is, and there's going to be forced selling. Uh, there's huge, there's, there's the, the amount of margin in the system now uh, on a percentage basis rivals all the highs. So you're going to have margin calls. And there will be, if we, if they don't turn this thing around today, the weekend, people are going to figure out and, and have margin calls hit first thing Monday morning. They're going to be forced to sell. It's not a question of whether they want to or are afraid. They're going to have to sell. And margin calls will be get margin calls. The whole system is based on credit. This is a credit unwinding. You're seeing it all over the world. You're seeing it in all markets all over the world. You're seeing it uh, massive moves in currencies. You're seeing commodities collapse. The credit bubble, it's like pulling out the center post of a big tent. The whole thing is coming down. And how far do you think, I mean, let's say we close today on this low note, I don't know, 300 points down, 400 points, whatever it is, 200 points down, on Monday, which I guess will be Black Monday, um, I mean, how far do you think this would go down? Um, it could go down until they close the markets. You could see the markets close. China did it a few uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. You could see our markets close Monday. Do you think that, that would be the only way to stop the selling? So I, I know the the stock uh, uh, the stock. Um, the, the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, and the BATS, they all have kill switches um, to, to stop the market from going down. I mean, right. I mean, who knows? I mean, they might throw the switch and say, okay, whoa, we got to well, cut this off. They have circuit breakers, and I'm, they put the circuit breakers uh, in force several years back, and I don't remember exactly what the levels are where the circuit breakers hit, but let's say we hit uh, – the circuit breakers a couple times. There's, there is one way to stop the selling, and that is just pull the plug on the market to shut everything down. And how long do you think the market will be shut down? I have no idea. Um, I would think I would think that if we have something like that were to happen Monday, they'd try to reopen it Tuesday. Maybe they could get it reopened. Uh, maybe maybe they could muster enough force to get some type of a bounce going. It's hard to say, but ultimately the markets are going to close and we're going to have a reset. Mother Nature is going to have her, her revenge. I mean, is this being brought on also by what's happening in China? Because I see manufacturing is way down. Their market is way down. Right. Um, you think people are selling there and looking over here going, okay, let me get out and and this is what you're talking about for selling. I know institutions uh, purchase a huge amount of blocks of stock. And I know when I was working for uh, Tia Kref, um, uh, basically they bought in huge blocks and they would buy and sell in huge blocks. And I know back in 2008, they were just dumping it at that point. So is this being brought on because of what happened in China or... No, it's, it's being brought on because systemically, worldwide, everywhere, there is too much debt. 
and we reached a level of debt saturation back in 2007, 2007, 2008. And then what you had was you had uh, sovereign governments step up and try to reflate by borrowing more. Now the now sovereign governments across the board have reached debt saturation, and the pie GDP global GDP is no longer growing. So the pie is stagnant or even shrinking. And you, you cannot service the debt to the pie with a stagnant or shrinking GDP. And that's what the currency wars are about. That's what the devaluations are about, is to try to get a bigger slice of a same size or smaller pie. So going forward now, I mean, do you think going into the fall that this is just going to get worse as we go forward now. I mean, we're seeing this right now, these huge fluctuations. And when we hit, you know, September, October, November, I mean, are you seeing this whole thing just pretty much unravel and collapse on itself? I do. I believe that we're going to have a complete unraveling, whether it's, whether it unravels right from here, I don't know, but the complete unwind of the credit uh, structure is going to occur. There is just too much debt to be serviced. So, and the debt is bad. You can't make, I, I wrote this back in 2007, 2008, you cannot make bad debt good mm. by adding liquidity. Because when you add liquidity, that's adding more debt. You can't make you can't fix a debt problem with more debt, and that's what they've tried to do. And it has not worked. It's, it will not work. So for the everyday person on the street, I mean, if this is unraveling right now, are we going to see mass layoffs like we did? I mean, I remember in 2008 when everything started to fall apart, you saw all of a sudden companies like, okay, we're laying off these people, and you see you know, Lehman, they're walking out with their boxes. You see other companies start to lay off. Do you think this is going to be a domino effect as we go forward, where layoffs uh, are going to be happening? I, I think you're missing the point. Oh, if, okay. this, if the credit system unravels, you're talking about the banks closing. You're talking about the brokers closing. When, when credit ceases, that means distribution is going to break down. That means products don't make it to Walmart's shelves. That means... You could go to your job, but you're not going to get paid because they can't pay you because the bank is closed, because the credit system is shut down. You could see a complete closure and shutdown of the system, of everything. This is not, we're, this, we're not going into a, quote, recession, where things get tough and you tighten your belt. I'm talking about a complete closure of the system. They're going to have to reboot it. They're going to have to reset the system. And they're, and when things, it's not, it's not the closure that's going to kill you. It's the reopening that'll kill you. And I say that because the reopening, people are going to all of a sudden think they were sitting on, you know, a million dollars worth of XYZ or whatever. And it may only have purchasing power of $20,000. Who knows? You're, you're looking at a reset of everything. You're looking at a reset of currencies, of all credit, of all equities, of real estate, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. And how long this is going to last, I don't know. Uh, but they're going to have to reboot the system, and it's going to have to be rebooted, I believe, with gold as a foundation for money. Because all money is credit. No money is real in today's world. So you're talking about the collapse of the system. Basically, it's it's right. a complete disaster. Forget about layoffs. Forget about everything right. just shut down. Right. And th the people that have their uh, stocks, their money in the bank, basically that will be devalued. And right, your currency. I think currencies across the board are going to be devalued. And it'll be, currencies will be devalued against stuff. And 
first and foremost, it'll be devalued versus gold. So during this time period, I mean, what, I mean, okay, let's just take a normal everyday family who's, you know, living in a city or out in the country. I mean, what are they going to see? I mean, what are they going to see? Yes, they're going to hear on the news, banks are closed down. But I mean, what else are they going to, what are they going to feel when this is occurring? Uh, the families in the cities, good luck, because you're going to be in the middle of, of riots. And I say riots because store shelves are not going to be stocked. People are going to run out of food within two, three, four days. Nobody has food stocked up. And people out in the country, hopefully you've stocked up some rice and beans. And for how long, I don't know. But uh, distribution will break down when the credit system comes down. And what do you think the government and the Fed's answer is going to be to this whole entire thing coming down? Uh, I, I have no idea what the answer is going to be. I believe that uh, the Jade Helm operation is a preparation for that. I think they, they understand uh, or they understood that this fall was the time frame that they couldn't kick the can any further. So do you, uh, I mean... We all understand that Jade Helm is going to the end of September or so, and this is happening right now. Um, and what we're seeing is basically war being kicked up in Ukraine, in the Middle East. I mean, do you think they're going to kind of push war to cover what is going on here up? Or, I mean, what, what's the purpose of them doing all this then if this whole thing's coming down right now? I think that's what they've been doing is trying to get war started as a cover uh, so that they could use war to say, well, our, our policies would have worked, but if it wasn't for this war, they would have worked. Okay, so this is, this is why you see them pushing so hard. It's that's funny because John Kerry came out the other day when they're making this Iran deal and he said, you know, and I thought it was a very, and I keep mentioning this, but I thought it was a very strange remark to say that, you know, the dollar is going to collapse if we don't make the Iran deal. And, you know, of course, they've been pushing that this was a nuclear deal. And you're like, well, why does a nuclear deal have to have anything to do with the dollar collapsing? And I thought that was, I don't know if that was a slip up or he was just saying, listen, this is going to happen. And, and he's just letting a little bit out there to let everyone know. Strangely, I think he was, was telling the truth. And the reason I say this is if you look at the Germans, the French, the, the, the Europeans, they had, uh, they sent delegations over to Iran. So they've already signed off on it and they've already basically agreed to the deal. If the U.S. does not agree to the deal, we're on our own. Mm. And that would, I mean, who, who's, who in the world is is going to follow or want to continue using the dollar? You know, there's no coalition. In other words, if if we don't tag along and do the Iran deal, we're not part of quote the coalition. Right. I mean, I mean this Iran deal. I mean, to me, it seems like, and I've. Sp- spoken to many people, it really has nothing to do with nuclear weapons. It really has to do with keeping the dollar continually going, um, using Iran's oil, um, keeping the petrodollar system afloat. And I think that's why we're moving into Syria, at least trying to get into Syria, into Iran. The Middle East, we know, is falling apart. And I think the whole petrodollar system is actually going down the toilet right now. Right, it is. And and think about this. Uh, there's less demand for oil now. Right. Okay. But there's also at forty dollars compared to just use around a number of a hundred dollars, that's sixty percent less demand for dollars. Even if even if demand for physical oil remained the same, which it's not, it's it's lower. But assuming that it remained the same that is 60% less demand for dollars to settle oil. So there's there's your your the knees being cut off from underneath the petrodollar. The petrodollar cannot be supported with 30 or 40 dollar oil. 
You're right. So let me ask you this. How does this then fit into what's been happening with gold? I mean, if this whole thing is starting to fall apart, you're talking about a collapse situation, what are we going to see with gold? I mean, is this still going to be at the $1,100 level? And we know it's included with paper gold and things like that, but is are we going to see a dramatic increase of gold? When the system shuts down, and even I mean, going into it, you've seen strength in gold over the last week or two. And it to me, it looks like gold has absolutely bottomed. Gold is, if you want to call it the anti-dollar, gold is not a liability. It's no one's liability. Gold is money. And all these currencies outstanding are credit money. They are someone's liability. And I think that once the system shuts down and reopens, you're going to be shocked at the revaluation of gold. And you can't pick a number. I mean, there's no way people say, well, you know, what, what price do you think gold's going to go to 2000 or 3000 or whatever? You can't even pick a number. And the reason you can't pick a number is you have no, have no idea how much uh, QE is going to be done. Because forget about a rate hike. That's not going to happen. The Fed is going to be forced by this, this credit collapse to print. So you have no idea how many dollars are going to be printed. And you have no idea how much gold the U.S. has to value those dollars against. I mean, if they have no gold, then gold in dollars mathematically is infinity because you're looking at zero on one side, infinity on the other side. So when this whole thing resets, uh, is it still going to be the dollar that they'll be using or do you think they're going to trans transition into well, a different currency? I have no idea. I would suspect that they're going to bring out a new currency. And you, I mean, right now the dollar is the reserve currency of the world. This right. new currency, is this only going to be used, uh, I guess, here in the United States? Or, I mean, because we know that, that China has been purchasing a huge amount of gold. We know Russia has been purchasing a huge amount of gold. And China has been making bilateral trade agreements and having clearinghouses set up. I mean, at this point in time, we know the dollar is dying. And, I mean, will the dollar continue to be the reserve currency, I, I guess, Absolutely not. How can it be? And it can't. So this new currency that they're coming out with um, would have to be only used here in the United States. At we may we may end up going to a, a dual currency in the United States. Mm -hmm. One currency to settle outside trade, and one one currency to to transact in. It's hard to say. I mean, this is yeah. This is not a a uh, cut and dry mathematical thing, but something big is going to change, and it's not good for the dollar. So let me ask you for those people who are wondering, which I am wondering, after the reset, you're saying this is going to be the very tough time after the reset um, because basically, I guess everyone has lost their wealth and lost their. Uh, and everyone's try scratching their heads, figuring out, like, uh, w what's our next step here? I mean, what is the central bank going to actually do at that point in time? Uh, it's not important. The central bank it will be, be relegated to, to unimportance. The, the, the tough times mm -hmm. coming back after a reset in the case of the U.S., is exacerbated by the fact that all of our manufacturing is gone. We don't manufacture anything anymore. No. And that's the problem. I mean, what uh, of what value to society is a paper pusher when society needs shoes or food or what have you? Uh, we don't make anything anymore. We do export some some agricultural products. So yeah, we will have we will have that. But our our superpower status as the manufacturer to the world has gone to China, and and China will emerge once this is 
once this occurs, China will will have a much easier time because they have new plant and equipment. Our plant and equipment is very, very old, and much of it's been sold and sent overseas. So with China becoming the world manufacturing empire and the U.S. Uh, having nothing and, the, and, of course, the devaluation of the dollar and the loss of wealth, I mean... Can China continue on even though the U is because U.S. is like one of the biggest purchasers of their goods. I mean, can t China continue on? Well, it'll be a shock to China, no doubt about it. But China has been uh, trying to create the old Silk Road. They've been trying to do that for the last over a year now. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing uh, swap, I mean, currency swap deals. They've been making trade deals all over the world. So what they're doing is they're preparing to replace, probably can't completely replace the demand from the U.S., but they're trying to replace that demand with new customers. So with everything that you're saying, it sounds like the U.S. is going to become like a, a third world country. That's not what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure here. Because, I mean, to me, everything that you're talking about, I'm like, okay, it, 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 I'm getting red flags, and I'm saying, okay, third world country. Yeah, and that's Banana Republic. I mean, we've, we've, we've done so many really dumb decisions. Yeah. And I've said this for a while now. I, I cannot believe that the decisions that were made were mistakes. It's almost as if we were purposely being driven into a ditch. Because no one could be this stupid. So everything they talked about in 2008 when they were asking for the bailouts about riots, people on the streets, we're going to actually see it this time. This time around. So. This yep. time around, and 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 basically, everyone really needs to be prepared um, for what is coming. If you haven't really started, I mean, you better start getting water, food, and supplies just to get through this time period, um, because it, it doesn't sound good at all. And and we're starting to see the the beginnings of it. Um, it's Monday morning. Yeah. And right now. We're seeing um, uh, North Korea and South Korea starting to fight. Um, we're having information come out that there's a firing between the two going on. We see Ukraine. I'm, get, I'm hearing reports that troops are being built up on the Kiev side. And we see well, that... The fighting started a couple of days ago. There, yeah. there is fighting in several cities. Uh the ceasefire or truce agreement, whatever, has been broken. Yeah. And it seems like they're just going to be pushing the war right now as hard as they possibly can. And and, and what I'm nervous, I, I spoke to a, a lot of different people, and, and what I'm nervous about is that this is not a war with Iraq or Yemen. I mean, if Russia gets involved, if China gets involved, I mean, these are superpowers. These countries but, have nuclear weapons. They, they, I mean, they don't you know, they have either equal or better weapons than we do. And they will get involved because the world is tired of the U.S., you know, barging into the room and knocking everybody down. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, and it, uh, hopefully it doesn't go that far. Hopefully it's stopped before that time period. But I, I see the U.S. government. They just keep pushing and pushing, um, and it seems like they can never admit that, oh, yeah, this is a failure, this is not good policy, and it feels like they just continually push and push until they get what they want, no matter what happens. The risk is that the U.S. kicks the table over. That's the risk. Yeah. 